<clears throat> this is DVT Q&A for the benefit of everybody. So I haven't been recording in quite a while, but today a patient and their family had a great idea. Why don't you take the questions that we're asking you and just answer them for, the, for, the, for everybody? So here in no particular order are a few questions that I've listed that I uh, am commonly asked. On the bottom, you'll see the uh, video broken down into chapters. So if you're interested in a particular question, you can kind of scroll to where you need to go. So the first question is, is walking okay after a deep vein thrombosis? So the answer is absolutely yes. In the past, we're talking 30 years ago, bed rest was, uh, even before that, bed rest was prescribed. But uh, we know that walking, once a patient is receiving a blood thinner, uh, is actually actually beneficial and uh, usually very safe. So yes, walking is okay. Walking is also fine in the chronic phases. Walking activates pumps in the ankle, in the foot, in the calf, and these pumps can improve symptoms such as swelling and such as aching and pain. So yeah, walking is okay. Uh, what about air travel and car rides? Well, that's a super common question. Patients ask me, well, we know, we think that being in a long car ride is a risk for clotting. We know that being on an airplane is a risk for clotting. Can I fly? Uh, can I go on a car trip? And the answer is absolutely yes. Well, ironically, when you are on a blood thinner, you're actually protected, right? Now, uh, of course, when we are sitting for a prolonged period of time or when we are in an airplane cabin, our uh, legs may swell up. So getting up frequently, staying hydrated, uh, wearing a compression stocking when appropriate, all these things are, are great to prevent these symptoms. But especially when you are receiving a blood thinner, you can, you can fly as long as your breathing's okay. Uh, what about food? Are there any specific food items uh, that are recommended specifically to people with blood clots? So uh, the short answer is no, not really. You know, a healthy diet is what we recommend for everybody. Uh, there are some um, uh, supplements that might uh, be beneficial for patients with um, uh, what's called the post-thrombotic syndrome, patients with swelling, achiness, uh, things of that sort after having a deep vein thrombosis DVT. I'll include a link uh, in the uh, comments section uh, to an article about that. Uh, but as far as general diet, just uh, your normal healthy general diet. Uh, I am often asked if a deep vein thrombosis poses a risk factor for a heart attack or myocardial infarction or a stroke. And the answer is no, it, it doesn't. There's this rare instance where a clot could pass through a hole in the heart and go to where it's not supposed to. So everything is possible in medicine, but as a general rule, these are two separate entities. Uh, can the clot go anywhere? That is probably uh, the most common question I'm asked. Uh, people are worried that the clot will move and harm them. Well, when the clot is fresh or what we call acute, then it, the consistency is like jello, like the jello you'll get in the store. And then it could move. And that's why we insist on a blood thinner. And uh, that's the more risky uh, period of time. As time goes on, the consistency of the clot in your veins changes. It becomes more ropey, more scar-like. It's more adherent to the wall and it's not going anywhere. So even if you have an ultrasound years after having your clot and there's some remnant clot in the vein, that, that clot is not going anywhere. Uh, what should you watch out for? That, that's again, a super common question. Uh, people want to know if they need to watch out for anything specific as they're being treated for the blood clot. I guess there are two things to watch out for, right? The first is, signs of recurrent clot. When we're being treated for, uh, uh, with a blood thinner for a blood clot, typically treatment is quite effective, but nothing is 100%. And so some people might experience recurrence. Uh, what would signs of recurrence be? Well, they'll be similar to the signs you had when you had, or symptoms when you had the original clot. You may have ex uh, more pain, you may, may have more swelling. If the clot goes to your lungs, you may have chest pain or shortness of breath. So any out of the ordinary symptoms, you know, don't ignore them. Uh, then there are the complications of treatment. So as long as you're being treated with a blood thinner, uh, although these are safe medications, there's always a risk for bleeding. So you need to watch out for bleeding. If there's a minor superficial kind of cut that you can stop by putting some pressure on, I mean, I mean that, that's something you can obviously tend to on your own. But any bleeding that is out of the ordinary, that is not stopping, or if blood is coming out of somewhere it's not supposed to come out of, especially if the quantity uh, is, is alarming, definitely do not ignore and seek medical attention for sure. Um, leg swelling and pain. Um, so there are many uh, people after experiencing a deep vein thrombosis will experience some degree of leg symptoms. 
symptoms. Um, as many as half of the people, one in two of the people who have had a blood clot in the large veins of the legs would experience at least some of these symptoms. And the sneaky part is that the symptoms may take as long as two years to build up. So they could come a bit late. Now, uh, these symptoms are called the post-thrombotic syndrome. They're not always severe. Oftentimes, they're mild, although in some people, they could be more severe, including more swelling, more skin changes, uh, including skin breakdown and what's called ulcers or wounds that are difficult to close. Um, the Unfortunately, there isn't uh, a very good treatment for the post-thrombotic syndrome, so the name of the game is prevention. Uh, but there are measures to kind of target the various symptoms of the post-thrombotic syndrome, and may maybe we'll do a video on those and kind of focus on those. And, and again, I'll, I'll include a link in the uh, comments. I'll include uh, as many links as I can. Cancer screening. Cancer screening is a very complicated uh, question to answer, especially in a short video like this, where I'm trying to kind of go through many questions. But as a general kind of statement, I would say that that non-discriminatory sort of general screening for cancer is typically not recommended in people who have had a blood clot, even if we don't know the reason for the blood clot. Uh, but what's called age-appropriate cancer screening, so things that are, are advised for people your age anyway, maybe a mammogram, maybe a colonoscopy, maybe a prostate exam, things of that sort, those are definitely worthwhile. And also, if you have a symptom that maybe you've been ignoring and or not reporting, this is the time to report those because maybe that symptom is relevant relevant to what's going on with the clot. Uh, the reason for all this is, of course, that some types of cancer are associated with clotting. And so uh, if somebody had a clot, in some instances, it is a sign of cancer, unfortunately. So we do need to do what is necessary. Um, and then uh, maybe the last question for this video is going to be recurrence risk. What is the risk of the clot coming back? So. Uh, we divide clots into provoked and unprovoked. So if we know the cause, if it was surgery and a person had major surgery and then had a clot, then after we treat them, we can take them safely off of a blood thinner. And typically clots don't recur, not zero, but the number is probably lower than maybe 3% over five years. But in people where we don't have a solid reason for the clot, what's called an unprovoked clot, where the clot just kind of happened out of the blue, then the risk of recurrence is typically higher. An average number we quote is maybe 25% uh, for the clot coming back. There's ways of kind of pinpointing that number and kind of narrowing it down a little bit, but that would be in kind of a number to uh, kind of look at long term. All right, so I hope uh, this, uh, this kind of Q&A format was useful for you all. I'm more than happy to do it again. Just write me in the comments. And if you have any questions or any topics you'd like me to address in a similar way, I'd love to do that. Uh, as always, you know, uh, like, subscribe, share with your friends. And I hope to see you all back soon.